Shalom, Israel. It's your boy, New Breed. Coming through with another live stream. As you enter the chat, make sure you hit the thumbs up on the way in. I see y'all rolling in pretty quick. All praises to the Most High, God of Israel. We're going to be going in today. I want to speak in regards to being misunderstood and isolated in a fallen, broken world. The world is rapidly plummeting. The world is in moral disarray. There's discord among brethren. There's wickedness, there's sin, there's lasciviousness. There's suffering, there's hunger, there's famine, there's earthquake. There's a lot going on in the world. And one who is standing out, not trying to live of the world, can be very, very misunderstood. And a lot of y'all are suffering right now. A lot of you chosen elected brothers and sisters out there watching this stream. A lot of y'all are going through a lot at the moment. A lot of y'all are in a state of isolation. Trying to figure out why it seems that the world is against you. And in this particular stream, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to also help you push through and continue the good fight. I'm going to tell you why this is happening to you. I'm going to explain how you can stay motivated, although things look rough. I know what it's like to be misunderstood wholeheartedly. I get it. And uh, there's no feeling like it in the world when your intentions are actually good. When you have a heart made of gold, when really you just want to see everybody reach their full potential and flourish in life. When you really don't have a hateful bone in your body, but everybody sees you as a hateful person. It's like the world is in reverse. And remember, the Bible says, woe to those who call good evil and evil good. Well, that's the times you living in, ladies and gentlemen. People see their own carnal desires and pleasure as good. But they see righteousness, discipline, love, respect. They see that as wickedness. That's the world you live in. It. And, you know, I want to set the stage by giving y'all some scriptures. But before I do so, I got to greet you all the good people. Blessings, blessings. And I know that uh, it's a quite bright day out here. So if you're having a hard time viewing me. Bear with me, the sun is shining. Have to soak up that vitamin D. I see um, DJ Tatted is in the house. Jamie Rios is in the house. Lacey, I see you. Ashley, how you doing? King C3, Mike. All praises to the most high. Absolutely, it is a beautiful day. I see y'all rolling in. John Payne is in the house. Y'all make sure y'all hit that thumbs up on the way in. I'm hoping to have a very spirit-filled stream this afternoon. Now, I'm going to go into some scriptures to set the stage here, to set the table. Because this right here, the Bible, right? I hold up my phone, but y'all know what I mean. The Bible, the holy book. That's the parameters. That's the instruction manual. That's the way to fight and push through all of this, what you're going through at the moment. Because this awakening is not easy. It's not easy on you. It's not easy on any of us. Right? Let's go to it. Let's start off at Exodus 14 and 14. And it reads, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Oh, I know. That one right there, that could be tough to digest for a lot. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now, when you're misunderstood, 
when people are on the outside looking in and they look at you and they see that you're not doing what everybody else is doing. Um, they look at you as peculiar and strange. Man fears what they don't understand. So what's happening is, since you're not going along with the status quo, you're not going on with the mainstream media propaganda, you're not going on with the same lifestyle that at one point you was all in with. You're not going along with everybody else. So immediately they fear you. They're spiritually intimidated. They're looking at you from the outside and they're like, what has gotten into this person? What has gotten into this person? Why is it that I don't seem to know this individual anymore? They're not the same person that they were. And I'm going to tell you like this, ladies and gentlemen. It could be individuals close to you, friends, family, and what have you. These individuals can have more money than you. They could drive a nicer car than you. Their girlfriend can look better than yours. Their wife can be more attractive. They can have it all. They can have a fat ass bank account. On the exterior level, it can seem like they have everything going for themselves. But still, all in all, they looking at you with disdain, with hatred, with malice, with contempt. Why? I'll tell you why. It's the it factor. It's the Ruwak Kadash. It's what the Most High bestowed upon you since a child that you have now ignited in the spiritual realm. Bless your eyes that you see and your ears that you hear. So now everybody on the outside, although they seem to be happy, you can see right through them. You can pierce through their souls. And now what you see is a facade. You see unhappiness. You see resentment. You see their shame. Because they're not, a, they're not living according to the word of God. And instead of them looking at you and saying, wow, this person is special special instead of saying look this person is a special person instead of doing that they're looking at you with hate and now you're misunderstood now you since you have awakened you've decided to honor god's law statutes and commandments now on the outside people be begin to believe that you think that you're better than everybody although look they could be living the most bourgeois lifestyle they could be keeping up with the joneses they could be the most snooty, nose in the air type of people who think high minded, higher than themselves than what they are. But they'll still be looking at you like you are the one who think that you're better than them. Their shame is showing. Why? Because you honor yourself. You honor your body. You honor your mind. You honor your spirit. You stay clean contrary to their doings. So it's only really one thing to do, and that's to separate yourself from these individuals. That's the only way that you can propel in life because there's a gap between you and them and they're not going where you're going. And you're gonna have to swallow your emotions and decide, make a fervent, crucial, critical decision that you know what? I am not gonna be dragged to the bottom by these crabs. I am not gonna allow these people to drain me of my energy. I'm not going to allow these people's words to distort my mentality when I know that there's a higher power that I serve. And I know there's a great responsibility as someone who knows the truth. And I know there's no going back. I know I can't go back because I'm going to be judged twice is worse. It was better that I didn't know. It was better that I didn't see what was going on in the world because now that I see I gotta be held accountable. So regardless of what others are saying, regardless of how they view you, and let me tell you, they view you through a very murky glass, through a very narrow scope. They don't understand you because they don't see you. 
Only thing they see is what they're supposed to be. They don't see you, they only see themselves. And I'm talking about when I say themselves, they see the negative side because they're not learning. They're not learning. There's a lot of people who are stagnated in life and a lot of y'all gotta let go of those people because you ain't gonna make it to the next level. Let them talk, let them misunderstand you. They expect you because you've learned the truth. This is what they expect from you. They expect you to be perfect. They expect you to be perfect when they're not perfect. And the moment where you make a mistake, the moment where they see something that they deem is unworthy of salvation, then they're gonna point it out. Because they don't understand that this awakening is about growing spiritually, going to the most high. And it's a marathon, not a race. But they don't get that. But let's get it. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Listen, don't put vengeance in your own hands. And you're going to have a lot of things happen in this spiritual awakening. You're going to have people say things to try to trigger your emotions you're going to have people do things to you to get you frustrated and agitated they're going to watch you they're going to watch you with despitefulness and with torture hoping to get you out of character listen when you decide to do what's right you're going to make enemies you are going to make enemies you can expect it. Just like Christ, when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, when he went into the wilderness, he expected Satan to come and tempt him. That's the same thing that's going to happen when you decide that you're going to do what's right in your life. That you're going to follow the Most High's word. Satan is going to come. And these people are devilish, man. They're, they're demons. You're going to experience some things. A lot of brothers and sisters experience neighborhood mobbing, organized mobbing at their workplace, people ganging up on them, people slandering their name, people creating smear campaigns against individuals, and it's rough. Imagine how rough it is for a brother or sister who decides to cry aloud and spare not and shout it from the rooftop. And spare no one's feelings and hold no punches. You start seeing unmarked cars pull up. Watching, clocking. Why is the truth such a threat to this society? Why is the word of God such a threat to people? Why is the Bible being outlawed in China? Soon to come to Los Angeles. What's the threat? I tell you what the threat is. People are demonically possessed and don't want to face their demons. They don't want to face them. It's like the movie Fallen with Denzel Washington. Everywhere you go, these spirits are jumping in and out of people. And their attention is fixated on who? On you. Oh, you're misunderstood. Very misunderstood. Thank you for the $10 contribution. Um, says, had my manager unlock the door on me a while in the restroom, all because I put in my two weeks notice, her demons really showed that day. And that's how it goes, man. It's interesting that you brung that point up because I'm going to tell you, you will be surprised and shocked what people really feel about you. Like y'all don't understand what people really be thinking about you until they get upset. <laughs> you won't recognize it until they get upset, until they are triggered, until you do something that goes against their narrow scope of you. Then they'll tell you how they really feel about you the whole time. You're like, damn, I didn't notice how you really felt about me. 
<laughs> if you felt like that all this time, then why the hell was you around me in the first place, right? If this was your thoughts, why were you around me? Why are you conveniently nestled underneath me if you felt this way now that you're upset and you're letting me know? Tyree Jackson, thank you for the $10 contribution, says, needed this fam. Keep spreading the truth. Absolutely, brother. Thank you for your contribution, bro. Highly appreciate it. Thank you for the $5 contribution, says, facts, new breed. Thank you, bro. That's real talk, though. People have been, listen, you piss somebody off, they'll show their true colors. Now, listen, people say things out of anger. But sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, that anger is a catalyst to how they really feel about you. Whole time, they think that you was a maniac the whole time. They like, look, so you're psychotic. You want to live in this biblical truth the whole time. I thought you was uh, uh, in a cult. I thought you was crazy. I thought something was wrong with you. And now that I'm upset, I'm going to let you, I'm going to show that. And you be looking like, damn, that's nowhere near who I am. That's what you've been thinking all this time. They misunderstand you. Let's go to the scriptures. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Never forget where you came from. Because look, I could say all of this, and then some people, the takeaway would be that, you know what? Um, you know, these people are just wicked and I'm better than all of them. And then that can close you off as a person. And that's not what I want to do. I want you to forgive them for your sake, for your sake, remembering that Christ forgiven you. Because look, some of us in this truth, we forget where the hell we come from. We forget what we've been through. We forget all of the, the, the turmoil that we created in our own lives. We forget. We forget. Not realizing that everybody got their own time to, to open their eyes and awaken, right? So you forgive them, but listen, let me make this clear. You get the hell away from them. You get as far away as you can. You forgive them for your sake, but until they begin to walk this uphill spiritual battle and fight for their souls, fight for their spirits in these wicked days, then listen, you stand far away because they're going to be detrimental to who you are as a person. Thank you for the uh, $3 contribution, family. Highly appreciate it. Let's continue. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, it's a full-time gig trying to survive out here in these streets. It's a full-time job fighting against these demons, fighting against these devils. It's a full-time job trying to keep your head above water. Christ said, come unto me for your rest. We got to learn to rest in the Lord. We got to learn to rest in the Lord. Listen, what people think about you, you got to understand that you are not going to be able to change that. Okay? They have these false notions and they've already made up their mind that that's you. All right. Satan has already deceived them. There's nothing you can do to change that. And you will drive yourself utterly insane. Even sitting there trying to figure out why these people have such malice towards you. Why these people are gossiping about you? You're wasting your time. You need to rest in the Lord and count it all joy that they talking. Count it all joy. Count it all joy that you got haters. Haters everywhere you go. Haters everywhere you go. Count it all joy. It just means that you're going in the right direction. Broad lead of to damnation. Narrow is the straight way to salvation. Narrow, meaning there ain't too many people going to relate to you. 
ain't too many people going to relate to you. You're going to end up isolated, no matter how you slice it. Because why? It's the it factor. It's what they cannot quite wrap their mind around. It's that thing that makes you peculiar. It's that thing that made you special. It's that thing that laid dormant in your spirit ever since you was a child, ever since you was in elementary school. You were different. All the other kids on one side of the playground, you on the other. You were different. You were special. You did not fit in. It was already there. You were different. Your thought patterns were not like the other little kids. They may have picked on you. They may have made fun of you. They may have thought you were weird. What's wrong with that person? That's because the Most High had instilled in you certain attributes and certain gifts that needed to be initiated through the Holy Spirit. And the world knew who you were. They had dossiers on a lot of y'all. And don't think I'm speaking on a place of paranoia when I tell you. They were watching you when you was in elementary school. What do you think the 12 grades of learning were? It was a case study on the children of Israel waking up. Why you think they don't care about homeschooling now? Why you think they don't care people homeschool now? Because they already see where we at. They already see that the enlightenment is coming. They already see that the ascension phase is here. Your guidance counselors, they knew. Your teachers, they knew. Everybody knew. And they were trying to give you their worldly knowledge, which is silliness to the most high. They were watching your guidance counselor, your teacher. They had a dossier on you. They knew the kids who were getting in trouble. They knew the kids who didn't want to sit still in the class. They knew the kids who had something deeper in them. They knew those kids. And what they were trying to do the whole time is stop the awakening. And they knew. They went to various guidance counselors. They went to the, the student board. I'm going to tell you something. It's deep. The rabbit hole goes deep. Don't think for a second that teachers and guidance counselors and principals and vice principals don't go to the student board and put case studies on certain children for an incentive. Oh, the rabbit hole goes deep. Some of y'all wonder why by the time you turn 18, cops are following you everywhere, waiting for you to slip up. Because they see something in you. they rather put you in prison. They're waiting for you to make a mistake. They're waiting for you to slip because they know that God is in you. They know the Most High have ignited something in you. And they're, they're more afraid of that than you being a thug and a criminal. You sisters out there, they'd rather you be harlots and show your body and get on the gram and show yourselves than be sisters of Zion, daughters of Zion, because they know how powerful you are. They, they, they know that your beauty is much more than skin deep. They know that your beauty is much more than skin deep. So they rather parade you around on a physical realm than let your than let your spirit bring forth the light that you really have. They were watching the whole time. They knew who we were. And now that you've awakened, Trust and believe, you got people in your family that say, look, we tried everything. You got Freemasons in certain people's families. You got people who, who practice the occult. You got people out there who practice Wiccan practices. You got people who was involved in all kind of religious cults. Jehovah Witness, Watchtower, uh, Watchtowers and all of the above. Mormon religion and all of the above. And they tried their best to keep you from waking up. They tried their best to keep you from seeing the light of day. And better believe they didn't have neighborhood meetings about you. Better believe they didn't have family meetings about you. Better believe that they're talking. But what can you do about it? But keep moving forward. Trusting in the Lord and fearing them not. You can't fear these people. That's what they want. And this land here, they always use intimidation tactics. They always use these intimidation tactics to keep us quiet to keep us from reaching our full potential, to keep us from shed, shedding the light of day, to keep us from being the voice of reason. 
They always use fear tactics, but the most high says fear not. Fear not. Let him fight your battle. Vengeance is the Lord's. Vengeance is the Lord's and it's going to hit like a drum. I'm telling you right now. Y'all hit the thumbs up on this video if you get if you gaining some wisdom right now. Show y'all support for the video. Let's continue. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Looking diligently Lest any man fail of the grace of the Most High, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You can't become bitter. Yeah, you misunderstood. Yeah, you different. Yeah, they're going to hate. Yeah, they're going to be disrespectful. Yeah, their true colors are going to show. Yeah, they're going to hurt your feelings. It's going to hurt. Yeah, you're going to have agonizing pain because... You tried your best to be a good person and do what's right, and they just couldn't see you for who you were. And now it's too late. But don't be bitter. Don't let bitterness spring up in your spirit. Because that's part of the program. The part of the program is making sure that you put certain spiritual barriers in front of yourself. They want you to block off your own blessings. They want you to, to get into a point of depression and stress. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'll be a liar and a half if I ain't tell y'all. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes your heart gets heavy. Sometimes you stress. Sometimes you feel depressed. There are days where you can't get out to bed. Because the weight of the world is it's just weighed on your shoulders. And when you walk out of your door day in and day out, you can feel this thick fog. You can feel this ominous presence. And the Bible tells us much knowledge bring much grief. It's like the more you know, the more you, you can see. And the more you know how far gone people are and the world is. And that could be very, very burdensome. And it's not easy. Sometimes your heart get heavy to the point where you just need to decompress. You need to be isolated. You need to be a, in a place where you can really facilitate all your thoughts through the Holy Bible, through prayer, through fasting, through supplication. You need to get to that place where the Most High God can speak with you and you can become one with your Creator. It gets hard. It ain't easy. When you know that there's so much hate and disdain for those who want to do what's right. It's not easy. Here it is, you got brothers going against these huge platforms. You got brothers going against the pharmaceutical industry. You got brothers going against, uh, I mean, all kind of the CDC. You got brothers speaking in regards to organized mob and CIA tactics, all of that. It ain't easy. But guess what? The truth got to come to the light. Thank you for the $5 contribution says, um, me and my older bro barely talk. He showed me truth and went back into the world and gets upset when I speak on the most high. You can't feel, you can feel the tension. Absolutely. I bet you can, bro. I bet you can feel the tension because he's, he's made a conscious decision that he was going to start on a righteous path and he thought that the world was more exciting. He thought the world, love, being a lover of pleasure, was more important than walking that narrow path. And you, being his brother, is a constant reminder that he made the wrong decision. And I'm not here to say it's too late from him, but you got to give him his space. Two can't walk and be in disagreement and get along, bro. Shireen Nicole, thank you for the $20 contribution, says all praises to Yah for the deep awakening we're blessed in these last days countless ways I appreciate you new breed you come through right on time as always God bless all praises to the God of Israel and thank you for contributing to this work thank you for the encouraging words as well see when I'm hearing sisters and brothers give me comments like that it builds me up and keeps me encouraged to speak this word because I know what comes with it I know what comes with it and I'm going to tell you now, 
we're coming into a time where we got to learn how to swallow our emotions and get those out of our circle who ain't down with us fully. We got to. Let me go. To, let me go back to these scriptures. Let me go to these scriptures here. Y'all give me one moment and hit the thumbs up on the video if you gain an um, edification will be highly appreciated. It says in James chapter four, verse six, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giving grace unto the humble. It says, God resists the proud, but give grace unto the humble. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you hurt their pride. You hurt their pride just from being humble, just from going to work every day. You keep your head low to the ground. You take care of your business. You might keep your head low, but your shoulders are back. You're confident, but you in there to just handle your business. You want to live righteously. You ain't caught up in the he say, she say, or the cliche. You're not caught up in all the rhetoric that people are spewing all across the, the workplace. And your humbleness, your humbleness, it hurts their pride. It hurts their pride, I'm telling you. There's a lot of people out here who are arrogant. One thing the most high hate is a person who is arrogant with a proud look, a person who is high-minded, who think higher of themselves than they are. Listen, although we're very special and peculiar people, we know without a shout of a doubt that we're nothing without the most high. It is because we have a creator. It is because we have came into the spirit of humility. It is because we have humbled ourselves. It is because we, our ego was killed through all of the trials and tribulations that we went through. It is those reasons why the most high God has mercy on us. It is those reasons why the heavens are wide open to hear our prayers. It is those reasons why we're no longer in fear because we were broke down to be built back up. People who are prideful and arrogant can't see it. They can't see it. They can't see it. They can't be what you're being because they won't go through what you've been through. They're too afraid to take that real red pill. I'm talking about the real, red, the real red pill. That red pill that will break you down all the way down to the decimal. That red pill that when you take it, you'll go into a shock. Looking at the state of, of confusion that people are in. You'll go into a shock when you realize there's something going on in this world that got to be addressed. A hidden hand operating. Um, Big Judah, thank you for the $100 contribution. All praises to the most high says great work. Big Judah, salute to Big Judah. Thank you, brother. Highly appreciate you. Thank you for supporting this work, bro. Appreciate you. And that's what it is, man. They know. They know they can see it in you. They can see the humility. Here it is. They seem to have everything working for them. If everything is working for you, if you have all the answers, if, if your life is so peachy king, if the mirage and the facade that you put up on social media is your real life and you feel good and you are genuinely a joyous person, why do you hate the wicked? Why are you treating that young man in your family who has the potential to enlighten the masses like he's crazy? Why are you trying to put those young men and young women on prescription pills while they're in, in school? Because they have, they, they, they have energy, the energy that you don't have, the energy to get up and go. They want to say that you got a mental disorder. You have family members try to, to uh, advise you to take psychotropics. Why? Because you're waking up. They legit will think you're crazy because you want to follow the Bible. So they'll try to get you on these prescription pills. It ain't nothing like having somebody that you love, that you're supposed to be trusted in. Someone that you trust, someone that you admire. Try to offer you some drugs because you're reading the Bible. Try to offer you something that's going to de uh, dissolve this spiritual light that's coming into fruition. They don't understand the light. 
Jermaine Daniels, thank you for the $10 contribution, says Salawan Breed. Appreciate you speaking the biblical truth. Don't let up off these heathens. Next, all praises to the most high. Yah, we taking over 144,000. Blessings, brother. Thank you for that. Highly appreciate it. And you right. The time is now. There's a lot of people who need to choose sides or end up on the wrong side of history. Thank you for the $5 contribution. Terrell, highly appreciate it. Let's go back to these scriptures. Let's go back to these scriptures here. All praises to the God of Israel. Let's get it. Let's see. Let's go to Isaiah 41, verse 10, and it reads, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Yes, there's a lot of things that you can fear. There's a lot of intimidation tactics. There's a lot of things that people close to you will use to deter you from the most high. The Most High says, fear them not. When you walk out your door on a daily basis, you can feel it. Y'all can see it. Y'all know these spirits is operating on people. You know it's people out there that hate to see you winning. You know it's people out there that, help, that hate to see you in peace. Winning simply means that you are spiritually, you are spiritually aware. You're operating in clarity, levity, your mind, body, and soul is one, and you're not in discord whatsoever. That's winning. Winning to them is everything that's carnal, and they're still empty. Winning to them is everything carnal, but they're still empty. Y'all got to excuse me because I have to manually scroll the chat. Y'all make sure y'all hit the thumbs up on this live stream. Make sure these notifications is going out because it's the word that they really don't want to spread. Y'all know what it is. Let's continue. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all you care upon him, for he cares for you. Listen, everything that you care about, you got to learn how to give it into the hands of the Most High. Because here's the issue. Everything that you care about in life is not necessarily everything that belongs in your life. Everyone that you care about in your life is not necessarily supposed to be in your life. So everything you care about, you got to learn how to put that in the hands of the Most High. The Most High giveth and the Most High taketh away. There's going to be people who enter your life and people who exit your life as quick as they enter. It takes a certain level of strength to withstand the heartbreak, to withstand the betrayal. But that strength don't come from us, brothers and sisters. It's come from the Most High. It comes from the Most High. This program that they got us under, this matrix that they got us under, they don't want us to see this world from a spiritual vantage point. They don't want us to see what the world really is behind the curtain. They want you to walk by sight and not by faith. They want you to fall victim to the antagonizers, the criticizers. They want you to fall victim to those who don't have your best interest. Satan is using everybody as weapons. It's gonna come a time you look out your door, it's gonna look like damn zombie land out there. It's gonna look like zombie land out there. Because Satan, he has got, he has got his clutches wrapped around the necks of people in this system, in this matrix. And sometimes you think you battling with a person. And really, them demons, they, they got their hands up, they rear, they rear end like a sock puppet. They got the, them devils, they got their hands right up their rear end like a sock puppet, sock, sock puppet trying to provoke you. It takes strength to walk away from that. It takes strength not to argue, not to go back and forth, 
to understand that this battle that we're facing is spiritual. And that's why I find it so necessary to tell brothers about emotional intelligence. Getting to a point where we know we learn how to bridle our tongue and we don't react to everything. We're not always in our feelings. Get your feelings out of it. This is a spiritual war, not an emotional war. I see people on social media just spinning people around on an emotional roller coaster. There's so many despair merchants out there triggering people through emotions. Ask yourself, who you watching? Whoever you're watching out there, are they operating on your emotions? Or are they operating on logic? Sound wisdom, knowledge that's gonna bring you to the next level in life. Or is it emotionalism? Emotions can be very dangerous. Emotions can be that thing that keep you in close proximity or a intimate relationship for that matter with someone that you don't belong with. I'm telling you, being in your emotions is the difference between life and death in a lot of situations. That's the difference between life and death. When Lot's wife turned around and was turned into a pillar of salt when Lot and his wife was fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah. If Lot would have been in his emotions and turned around and looked back on that place, Lot would be a pillar of salt too, right? So you're gonna have people who love this wicked system. You're gonna have people who rebel on the sins that Satan have given them, on the luxuries that Satan have allowed them to operate in. You're gonna have people who don't wanna turn back and either they're gonna turn you into a pillar of salt or you're gonna keep moving. That's what it's gonna come to. It's gonna be very select few people who are really down like, it, like you think they are. You gotta watch these people around you. Some people are in love with this system. They're in love with the matrix. Some people, they know, they know that they're being deceived. Imagine that. You living in a society where people love being deceived. They like hide the truth from me, lie to me. It's easier that way. They know they're being deceived. Because the truth and the light is that hard to face. Because why? It requires change. It requires change. The toughest thing to do in life is to change. People don't want to do that. The Bible says that in these days, people will say, let us heap many teachers to ourselves. But don't prophesy unto us right things prophesy unto us smooth things prophesy unto us smooth things meaning look tickle our ears tell us sexy little lies tell us sexy little lies that will will nourish my emotions tell me things that's going to allow me to continue living in the same lifestyle that i've been living in don't tell me the truth. Don't tell me that my decisions will affect me in the afterlife. Don't tell me that my decisions, what I do here now is a test. And if I don't change the trajectory and the narrative of my life, that I can have hell to pay. People act as if there's no judgment. You got people living life like they're totally resolved from judgment, <laughs> sadly mistaken, sadly mistaken. You think that people can continue to practice whoredom, whoremongering, smashing out women and leaving them? 
You think people can continue playing both sides of the fence and being lukewarm to try to tickle your ears and continue to fleece the flock? Continue to manipulate and be spineless cowards that they are? You think they can continue to do that, to be sellouts, to be selling their people upstream for filthy lucre's sake? You think these people continue to, can continue to operate with dead man's bones? You think they can continue to lie and deceive us and hold us down as people and not have hell to pay? Wow. Brothers and sisters better get on the right side of judgment. Because one day we're going to find out whose lifestyle was deemed acceptable from the most high. One day we're going to find out. Let's go to these scriptures. They, they wonder why we stay to ourselves. And a lot of y'all brothers and sisters wonder why they misunderstand you. What I'm saying right now to some people watching, this sound like Charlie Brown language. You know, in a Charlie Brown cartoon, when the adults was talking and the kids heard wah, 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 that's what they hear. You know why? Because they're blind. They're deaf. They have eyes, but they don't see. They have flesh and blood, but they don't live. Just because you breathing don't mean you living. Just because you breathing don't mean you living. And that would explain why we have thus amount of people in the room. But hey, they can't hit the thumbs up. You know why? They breathing, but they ain't living. They don't even understand there's life being spoke right now. I'm telling you, agents, 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 everywhere you go. And then you got these, these devils out here, these demons who watch, just to watch the, the Ruach Kadash, the spirit of righteousness, so they can figure out ways that they can combat it. You can't combat it. This not coming from me. This not coming from a human being. This coming from on high. So you watching a person to figure out how you can break that individual down, thinking that it's a carnal and fleshly battle. It's a spiritual battle. Straight up, let's go back to these scriptures. Let's go. Let's go to Psalms 23 and 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Fear no evil. Fear no evil. Yeah, when you walking by certain individuals, they giving you these little wicked, evil little smirks. I know y'all see them. Some of these people are reptilians, whispering to themselves. You walking by people, they mumbling under their breath they looking at you with the with the most sinister demonic look that you've ever seen in your life because that light is beaming so when you walk by them they see they looking you walking through the valley of shadow of death listen the world you living in you're looking at dead people like the movie the sixth sense i see dead people when all the time all the time y'all remember that movie i see dead people when? All the time. Yeah. They everywhere. And you, you're not supposed to fear them. You're walking through the valley of shadow of death. Everywhere you go reminds you of death. You go into a convenience store. It looks like a damn hospital in there. You go into a supermarket. It looks like a damn hospital in there. You go outside. You go outside in the sunlight, in 90 degree weather. It look like a hospital out there. I mean, damn, if we not living in the valley of the shadow of death, where we living at? You see people breathing, but they ain't living. And they think, and, and you wonder why you misunderstood? Because you live. You live in a society where you're supposed to be dead mentally. You living in a society where you're supposed to be spiritually dead. You living in a society where you're supposed to be physically killing yourself through the GMOs. Through the hypersexualization. 
through the pornography and masturbation. You're supposed to be dead. You're supposed to be killing yourself. You was never supposed to made it out of the 12 to 12 levels of learning in school. You were supposed to be totally mentally scorned and scourged of truth and light before you made it out of high school. They were supposed to teach you the ways of the Babylonians before you graduated high school. They were supposed to have you on enough medication that you wouldn't have seen the light of day and you and you see the light of day. Now you live. The Bible says the truth shall you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It bothers them that you're free. And you ain't holding back. You're free. It's something about being cursed with the ability to see what society and life should really be like. There's something about it when you look in that society like, yo, this is backwards. This ain't living. This ain't life. Who's going to be the one of Judah to wake up that lion? We need the lion of Judah to return because this ain't right. This ain't life. This ain't living. We let we let these oppressors rule over us. And everything is in moral decay. The animals are dying. The fish are rolling up on the ocean shores. The food is poison. We don't even understand gender roles anymore. We're looking at a sexual free-forming culture that is promoting wickedness, promiscuity, sexual deviancy. You're living in a society where you can't tell the girls from the boys and the boys from the girls. You're living in a society where they want to take the testosterone out of men and feed them nothing but soy products. You're living in a society that's wicked and evil and they and they misunderstand you no we misunderstood we misunderstand them why would you fight against such a good god why would you fight against such a powerful omnipresent creator why that's the question and it, it tells you in the scriptures that <laughs> when judgment come when the most high slam the gavel People are going to look up and they're going to ask themselves why they're in hell. They're going to ask themselves how and why do we go? Why do we go against such a powerful God? What, what were we thinking? What were we thinking? When the Bible says the last to finish first and the first to finish last, listen. They left us behind. And now it's our turn. And those individuals who try to jump in and out of your life, tell them that they should have left you where they found you. Because now you following the most high. Tell them you should have left me where you found me. And the, and the most highest people, listen, for those who are misunderstood, we not bitter and we don't hold grudges. But when it comes to people, we have a mentality of it was what it was. It was what it was. Meaning, whatever, that, whatever type of situation we were in, whatever type of turmoil that we had against each other, listen, I'm not holding no grudges against you and I'm not bitter, but it was what it was, meaning I'm leaving that back there. I'm leaving that in the past. I don't give a damn who you are. You could be my mama, my daddy, my sister, my brother. You could be my first cousin. You could be my ex. You could, I don't give a damn who you are. You ain't gonna come in the way of this walk. And that's the mentality you gotta have. It was what it was. Listen, I love you from a distance, but it was what it was. Not no back and forth. 
No. Nah. And some people will say, well, man, that's just unforgiving. That's ruthless. That's mean. No. Nah. Listen, you got to be stern in this spiritual walk or you won't make it. It's getting dangerous out here with people. People getting desperate as hell out here. You won't even know what type of devil you dealing with until you piss a person off. You don't want you won't know what type of demon you dealing with until you ruffle that person's feathers and then you see all hell break loose. Now that person and cost you your life, jeopardize your livelihood and everything else. That person has showed their horns. When you see the horns, when those little horns stick out, believe what you looking at. Because it's like, as the most high's people, we go through so many things that the most high pull us through and he bless us to live and fight another day. And it's like, we forget. Like, did you forget how that person made you feel? Did you forget what you've been through with that person? Did you forget how dysfunctional that union was, that relationship was? Do you forget how distorted your mind frame was, how hurt you was? And then you let them back in and then something twice as worse happens because you were disobedient to the father. We misunderstood because we going on the right path and we're not taking no, we're not taking no nonsense from people. I'm telling you right now, let's go back to these scriptures. Y'all get that thumbs up on this video, man. We're not playing no games today. Let's continue. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Don't fear these people. The Bible says the Lord will go forth with you. Don't fear them. And, and listen. They do things. I, I educate a lot on gang stalking, right? Which is organized mobbing. Um, it's when collective groups of people come against one individual for their political, religious, or social differences. It happens all the time in society. It's something that is not talked about that much, but it happens. It's nothing new under the sun. It's nothing new under the sun. They always watch Christ's people. They watched the 12 disciples. They watched Christ. Christ and his death was very political. There are certain organizations that set up to make sure that we're living in a surveillance state. All right. For those who don't know, somebody's always watching. And if it ain't a physical person watching you, your cell phone is watching you. Your tablet is watching you. Some of, one of these wireless devices is watching. That's how the hell they know before you look something up, they already know what you're looking at. They already know what you're looking at. They know what your morning playlist look like and everything. Because they're watching. All right? And they read your retinal scan to the point where, listen, you could be thinking something. This is how deep the technology is. You could be thinking something and you could be looking at your screen. They can scan your retinal and then all of a sudden what you was thinking about, they showing it. You thinking about ordering some black and yellow 13 Jordans. Now, all of a sudden, some black and yellow 13 Jordans is on your Google search engine. That's how we be. I'm telling you, real talk. So, don't find it far-fetched that you got enemies. That you got people who, who have case studies against you. What it really should do is highlight how powerful the Most High is. It really should highlight how protected you are. It, should, it really should highlight why you should be fearless because if they can go through all of this, if they can go through all this technology, if they can go through all these organizations, CIA, FBI, uh, organized mobbing, Freemasonry, uh, Wiccan circles, because uh, they do, there's people who do witchcraft behind the scenes. There's people who do a witchcraft on the chosen all the time. If they can go through all of that and not a hair on your chinny chin chin has been harmed. What does that tell you about the God that you follow? Not a hair on your chinny chin chin have been harmed. So what that mean? That means everything that happens in this world is for the greater good of those who are chosen. 
It's designed to chastise you. It's designed to help help you walk upright. It's designed to give you a sense of confidence that you would have never got if you didn't have the world going against you. You would have never had that sense of confidence if you didn't have all of these persecutions going on around you. If family never turned their backs on you. There's people out there who left you for dead. They left you for dead. And now they got to look up and see you. Ain't that crazy how the most high will bless you in your enemy's faces? A lot of y'all about to be uplifted and blessed right in your enemy's face. You're going to be so magnified and the glory of the Lord is going to shine so heavily upon you that they can't help but to see it. They can't help but to see it. And admire what the most high God has done when they left you for dead. Some of y'all got left by people and they thought that you would never pull yourself out of that. They counted you out. They thought you would never succeed. They thought you would never be able to get up and, and keep your head up and walk and live and work another day and grind and, and thrive and succeed. They thought you would never make it. They thought you couldn't survive without them. Don't let they asses come back around. Don't let them come back around. They thought you couldn't make it without them. They, matter of fact, to a degree, they reveled in the fact that you were failing. They reveled in the fact that you were hungry. They reveled in the fact that you were in need, even if you asked them for it because they reveled in the control and the manipulation they had over you because they were able to lend a helping hand. That's right. You got people who will lend you help just for control. Just so they can feel like they got your life in the palm of their hands. You got people who do things not for the pureness and righteousness of their hearts, but to control you and feel that power. They thought they had you and they don't. The Lord the whole time was looking upon your life and said, nope, not that one. Not my child who I knew before I even put them in the belly. Not my child where I formulated in the heavenly realm and said, listen, I have a purpose for them. When everybody else thought they wasn't going to never amount to anything, when everybody else thought that person was peculiar and weird, when everybody else counted them out and left them for dead, I see them. The Most High always roots for the underdog. Always. And all these people on social media, all these, these so-called manosphere people and everybody else, these dating coaches and advisors who feel like, hey, we got the numbers, we got this, we got that. Oh, we're so high-minded, we have it all. Better believe the most high is rooting for the underdogs. With the small platforms, with the, the most high is rooting for those who are at the bottom. He's rooting for those who stand in integrity and righteousness. And guess what? The underdog going to win. The underdog going to win. Because what's happening right now in this society, you got these people separating man and woman, playing both sides to pin man and woman against each other when now it's time for us to heal, brothers and sisters. It's time for us to heal. Thank you for the uh, $5 contribution. Says, thank you, new breed. My father told me I would be nothing and just a BM. I am 32 with one child, married at a a business owner, the most high show different. Absolutely. See, you born into families. Some of y'all are born into families that you're meant to overcome. You're meant to overcome. That's witchcraft. That's a dark prayer that that person put over that sister life. Whether it's blood of my blood or flesh of my flesh. If they don't want to see you succeed and they want to pigeonhole you and keep you at this low level, you got to overcome and rise, rise up. You got to rise up above all the naysayers because those are curses. Those are dark prayers. Those are forces of, of demonic energy. Those are malevolent forces designed to put curses and plagues on your life. Only the most high can break those plagues and curses. Only the most high can break that. Straight up. 
And I'm telling y'all, man, you got to follow what's right. Don't allow these people to separate man and woman. Don't allow these people to sow discord. Don't allow these people to toss you to and fro with a pile of leaves. It's about time that we get our discernment right. As misunderstood, isolated people, in your time of isolation, I pray that all of y'all work on discernment. I pray that all of y'all learn very active listening skills. I want you to really sharpen up. That's the that's the uh, the lesson that I want y'all to take away. I want you to use active listening skills moving forward. Don't get drawn. Don't get drawn to individuals based on what's on the physical realm. Don't get drawn to individuals based on how they look. Don't get drawn to them based on personality. Listen. You ain't got to like someone to hear the truth from someone. You ain't got to like them to hear the truth. Because here's the thing. The reason why a lot of these people in the world are misunderstood to who you are is because they don't like you personally. You can be very dynamic with your thought patterns. And you can be a very wise spirit and a wise soul. But because they don't like you, they won't process the information. Because they just don't like you. They don't like the messenger. It don't have nothing to do with the message. They don't like the messenger. Because we're talking about carnal people. They're talking about carnal people. They don't understand you, the messenger. They understand you, but they don't like you. And that's how, that is the depths of people th these days. Oh, I don't like him. I don't like her. Oh, I like him. Oh, I like her. That, that's the depths of people mentality. They're not digging deeper. You as chosen brothers and sisters got to dig deeper. You got to dig deeper. Don't fall for the propaganda. Don't fall for the lies. All you men out there, don't fall for the lies that these dating coaches and red pill content creators are teaching. Ladies, don't fall for the lies that they, they, they're teaching. That, that your Derek Jacksons, that he taught, those those smooth little lies those smooth things don't fall for it active listening just because something is hard to digest doesn't mean it is not the truth don't listen to these people because at the end of the day it's gonna have your mind it's gonna have your mind all over the place Jubilina Redeem, thank you for the $25 contribution. Says, thank you for your true and kind words. I am crying tears of joy. Keep being the light in the darkness. TIs are overcomers, warriors on front line for Christ. Absolutely. All praises to the most high. Thank you for that. And we no longer targeted individuals. We are the empowered ones. And that's exactly how they look at you. Because they understand their spiritual laws in place. They look at you as empowered. Stop looking at it like you're being targeted. You're not being targeted. You're being studied. You're being observed. You're being watched. But you're not being targeted because they have no power to target you. They have no power. A target is something that you aim at, you take a shot at, and you hit. Or at least you try to hit. If you want to call yourself a target, guess what? They missed the target. They look at you as empowered. They fear brothers and sisters. They set up all these organizations to stop people who think outside of Democrats and Republicans. They set up all these organizations to stop people who think outside of the matrix that they set up and Hollywood propaganda. They set up this whole system to stop you from thinking outside that. So now that you see, they're afraid. They're like, oh no. God's people are awakening. They can see you got world leaders sitting at the round table right now talking about you talking about me talking about us talking about we oh don't think that you're not important oh they're studying they sitting around the round table right now with a 10-foot demon behind them giving them incentives oh this is spiritual oh better believe they talking to demons and spirits better believe they got spiritual advisors that they go into that got direct links to spirits and, they, and those witches and those warlocks are telling them oh look something's happening oh our voodoo and our magic 
It ain't quite working. Something is going on down there. Something's going on. I mean, the, those people, we got to do something. We got to shut down everything. We need, we need pass, we need V passports. We need V passports. Oh, gas shortage, gas short. We need to, we need to stop everybody. We need to stop everything from moving. We need to hold everything still. They're waking and we can't stop it. And you still think you targeted or are you empowered? You got the enemy on his heels. You got the enemy on his heels. He's off his rocker right now. Desperate as hell. Because no matter how many of the wicked that they take out, because only two thirds of us won't make it. That leaves one third of us that, that can see. The other two thirds, guess what? They made their decision. But guess what? That one third is strong enough. They're afraid of that one third. They already got the two thirds of our people under mind control and manipulation. But that one third, even though they be few in number, even though we be few in number and we're far and in between, they already know that we're powerful because the heavens are open for us. When we pray to the almighty, our prayers are answered. And all their witches and their warlocks and their world leaders and their politicians and their, and their taskmasters and their, their sellouts and their, their bootlicks, all of those people, they know who we are. And they're afraid. You ain't afraid of us. Because physically we ain't going to do nothing. But we open it. Listen, we let no seals be loose. Revelations 5.5, 5, we loosen those seals. Oh, the seals are loosed. We're waiting. We're waiting for our God. We're waiting for him to send his son. To bring bloodshed and vengeance on this world. Christ coming back for bloodshed and vengeance. That's what the Bible tells us. They don't get away with nothing. Those people, those people who are talking behind your back, manipulating, turning people against you for no apparent reason because you're trying to live the word of God. It's better that they had a great millstone tied around their neck and cast at the bottom of the sea than mess with God's children. And they're going to pay for it. You're going to see people get removed out of here for messing with God's children. Somebody got to pay for what they done done to us. And the Most High is a just God. The Most High is a just God. And we almost got a thousand likes in this stream. Let's get them likes up. Let's get that thousand likes. Let's show the algorithms that we want to hear positive messages. Let's show the algorithms that we actually want to build on something that's going to help us in life. Not drama. Not talking about smashing different women and, and hooking up with chicks. Not talking about how wicked women are, not talking about how wicked men are, but actually speaking a word that's going to help us grow in a cohesive unit. Because this battle is spiritual. It's time for the spiritually minded, the like minded to come together. And we did it. And we're going to do it. No matter how much they shadow bad, no, much, no matter how much they hate. No matter how much they try to stop and throw a monkey wrench in the whole system, the righteous shall overcome. And they can't stop it. All praises to the God of Israel, the most high God, the creator of all. I hope that this message blessed y'all. I hope that it blessed y'all because I know what it's like to be misunderstood. I'm misunderstood, often misunderstood. And I know what y'all going through. only thing we want to do is make sure our people survive and get this truth only thing we want to do is make sure our people level up only thing we going only thing we want to do is tell the truth no matter how bad it hurts because we know that the truth set us free and we want others to be free that's it but they call us evil woe unto them that call good evil and evil good they call us wicked if you find it evil to serve the Lord, then you choose this day whom you're going to serve. If you find it wicked to serve the Most High, if you a brother who find it corny, you find it weak to serve God, you choose this day whom you're going to serve. Either you're going to serve the Creator or you're going to be on demon time. And when the devils come to collect, they're dragging your soul. They're dragging your soul right to hell. And it ain't going to be pretty. When your life leave a body, your body, 
Them demons can't wait to drag you and beat the life out of you. They can't wait to collect. So you choose who you gonna serve. What side of judgment you gonna stand on? No more whoremonger, no more whoredom. No more wickedness, no more lies, no more deceptions, no more false prophets. We don't want to hear that no more. We want the truth. It is what it is, man. All praises to the God of Israel. I love each and every one of y'all um, for exclusive content. I'm going to leave a link to my Patreon in the description box. Um, also, follow me on Instagram, y'all, at NewBreed404. Um, if you would like to support this work via Cash App, 10% of all contributions go back to the people for small bills, uh, groceries, gas money, lunch money, or what have you. You know what the Bible tells us. Charity covers the multitude of sins. So if you're going to give, give out of your heart. And if you don't give to me, at least sow a seed for those out there who are less fortunate. People who are homeless. People who are in need. Leanne Diamond, thank you for the $10 contribution. Says all praises. Loving this live king. Thank you, sister. Thank you for your continual support. Highly appreciate you. Blessings to you. And um, I want y'all to have a beautiful, blessed afternoon. Don't let nobody get you down. Don't let nobody rattle you. Don't let nobody um, shake your spirit. Stay in high spirits. Um, stay, stay strong out here. I know it's a battle day in and day out, but face it and fear not. I love y'all. With that being said, shalom and peace.